A new study looked at whether or not taking a supplement called Gwinex is associated with weight loss. The research group tested it on volunteer participants and obtained statistically significant results that, yes, indeed, it leads to weight loss. They got a p-value just below the famous threshold of 5%. That means there's a 95% chance their hypothesis is right. Right? Wrong! It means the experimental results should be taken seriously. If you repeat the experiment, you would get a significant result 95% of the time, right? A scientific experiment is almost always built around two competing hypotheses. The null hypothesis, that there is no effect of your experiment, and the alternate hypothesis, that there is an effect of your experiment. You can think of them a little bit as the boring one and the game-changing one, if you like hyperbole. Here we have an experiment in which 20 people are given Gwinex and 20 people are given a placebo. We weigh them six weeks later. The null hypothesis, the Gwinex group and the placebo group lost the same amount of weight, no difference. The alternate hypothesis, the Gwinex group lost more weight than the placebo group. When the experiment is done, we need to run our data through some sort of an analysis to determine statistical significance. Because it's not always obvious by eye if our numbers favor the null hypothesis, no weight difference, or the alternate hypothesis, Gwinex works. Many scientists worship at the altar of the almighty p-value. The p-value tells you how significant your data is. It often determines where you get published, or even if you get published. The threshold of significance is often set at 0.05, which really means 5%, or looking at it from the other side, 95%. But what does the p-value actually mean? You will be disturbed to know that most students who learn about this can't get it right. It's a lot like sex in this regard, except that it doesn't really improve with age. Even psychology researchers and people who teach statistical significance often get it wrong. Allow me a short aside into just how misunderstood the p-value really is by scientists. It's hilarious if you like to point a finger at people and truly terrifying if you work in research as I do. There was a short questionnaire sent to participants in the psychology departments of six German universities. Who answered? 30 methodology instructors. These are people who teach the p-value to students. 39 research psychologists who do not teach stats but who use them in their work. And 44 psychology students. They had to rate as true or false six statements about the meaning of the p-value. Here's one. You have found the probability of the null hypothesis being true. The trick? All six statements were wrong. How did our participants fare? Here's how many of them rated as true at least one of the statements, even though they were all false. Psychology students? 100%. Psychology researchers who do not teach stats? Nearly 90%. Stats instructors? 80%. None were professors, they were all advanced students, but still, they are teaching this stuff to students and even they can't get it right. If 80% of law professors couldn't teach what evidence is admissible in court well, we'd have major problems in our legal system. Before I tell you what the p-value actually means, what this test of statistical significance actually tells us, here is a quick list of what it doesn't. It does not give us a probability that these results would be repeatable under the same conditions. It does not tell us that there was no effect of the experimental manipulation. It does not prove or disprove a hypothesis. It does not give us a probability that a hypothesis is true. A lot of scientists think it is a measure of exactly that. How likely it is that taking Gwinex will help you lose weight given the data from our experiment. Not at all. Here then, finally, is what the p-value, so often reported in papers and implied by the media 
when talking about significant results, here is what it actually tells us. The p-value tells us the probability of obtaining the data we got or data more extreme than what we got, given that the null hypothesis is true. In our case, a p-value of 0.05 or 5% means the probability of obtaining the data we got when we assess the weight loss of the Gwinex and the placebo group, assuming that there would be no difference between the two groups, is 5%. The probability of our data, given the hypothesis, is 5%. The truth value of the hypothesis is never in question here. We are assuming it is correct. Now, if I invert the logical order here, we get something completely different that cannot be assessed using the p-value. This is now the probability of the hypothesis, given the data. This is what scientists usually want, but this probability is a Bayesian probability. It requires a different type of statistic that takes into account prior plausibility. Once again, the p-value gives us the probability of observing what we did given that there's no difference between Gwinex and the placebo. Bayesian statistics give us a probability that there's no difference between Gwinex and the placebo given the results we got in our little experiment. If you don't get the difference, trust me, there is one. Both types of stats are important. They are simply tools that must be used for the right job. They have been compared to kitchen utensils. A knife isn't great to eat soup with, and a spoon is kind of difficult to cut with. Turns out, a lot of scientists, and I mean a lot of scientists, are eating their soup with a knife. So when you hear through the media that a new study achieved high levels of statistical significance, odds are they're talking about the p-value. It may not mean what they think it means.